Okay, can I say I'm not an anchor for a reason, and that guy is a tough act to follow, so bear with me. Remember, I said a few choice words to that GM, and then he decided I better go into management. So here we are. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul, for that introduction and for your confidence in me. Thanks to my fellow horn frog. How about those horn frogs, huh? Bob Schieffer for his wit and for his voice. And most of all, thank you to the Radio Television Digital News Foundation for this tremendous honor. I tell them I think they still ran out of names. I was at the bottom of the list. Here I am. So I, I am humbled to be here. Um, I am also thrilled to be here tonight because two of my mentors have won this award before me. Fred Young is here in this room and Marty Haig as well. And uh, while I don't uh, think that I am ready to say that I'm at the same place that they have been in this industry, I'm glad that some of their teachings have rubbed off on me a little bit. So I appreciate that very much. I also need to thank my uh, father, Helmut, who's here, my mother, Monica, who is no longer with us, my stepmother, Joanne, who's been a tremendous asset to me, filling a great void when my mother passed away many years ago, uh, and thank them for being here tonight and, and for the sacrifices that my parents made for us to be in this country and to absolutely embrace the First Amendment and all that America is. So it is incredible to be here on this night, particularly when we honor uh, some tremendous colleagues here, but uh, no one knows that better than our family, what it means to be an American citizen when you have to fight to be such. So please don't take it for granted. And as you saw, I still have big hair, but I had big hair then. And my wonderful husband, um, I need to thank him as well because I have dragged him across this country, he and our two daughters, um, to practice this wonderful craft, and he is a true blessing to me and an inspiration, and I could not do what I do today without all of his support. So I thank Ray very much for being here. We've also made some tremendous friends. Many of you are in this room tonight. Carol Deering, who cleaned me up. You saw me pre-Carol. You saw me post-Carol. This is post-Carol. How am I doing? Pretty good? Good? You met the hammer. I am the nails. Um, hopefully not so bad anymore, right, Paul? Not quite so bad, Lane, right? So, not quite so bad. Uh, and we have some tremendous regional news directors in our company and news managers in our company, and uh, I'm so proud to call them friends, and I thank them because it is because of them that I'm here today. I also do want to recognize, again, the colleagues here that we have uh, honored tonight for their tremendous work on 9-11. Uh, that was an amazing day, uh, the most important news day of this newswoman's life, but it was also a joyful day for our family. It is the day that my husband and I gave birth to our daughter, Monica. So I have a tremendous connection to 9-11 uh, that is very different from any of you in this room, but I always honor that day and honor her. And I thank you for what you did, what you continue to do. Uh, but I'm very blessed that that day came and that our little girl came into this world. So. Okay, enough of all that. Honor. Thank you for indulging me on that. To uphold the First Amendment takes tremendous courage. It takes tremendous commitment. And I'm so proud to tell you that my boss, Paul McTeer, and Wayne Daughtry um, set that standard higher than anyone in Raycom Media. They challenge us each and every day in our company that we must uphold that First Amendment. We must get into our communities. We must tell the stories that need to be told. And it is because of their leadership and the wonderful work of our local managers and our local employees that I'm here tonight. And I must tell you, it is a proud and exciting time to be here tonight. Look at what Wolf talked about. Look at what's going on across this world. It is a powerful time for us to be in this business. And we should be enlightened by that, excited by that, emboldened by that. Uh, that we are able to bring the freedom of speech across the world and hopefully the freedom of democracy to these countries. Nothing should be more energetic to all of you as you see that. And the power of social and digital media side by side with the core of broadcast journalism I think is a powerful, powerful time for us to be in this industry. And, and you know, there are no better stories being told right now and there is no better time to take a moment, as we have done 
today to honor those who are there, the journalists that you've heard about this evening, the companies that support them, that are telling those stories, fighting those fights out there in a very difficult place. So we owe them our prayers, we owe them our thanks, because they are truly the example of upholding the First Amendment. So I, I appreciate Wolf bringing that to, to our attention. But I must tell you, we fight those battles of a different nature every day in our local newsrooms as local broadcasters. I think about some of the stations within Raycom, KOLD in Tucson, Arizona. They showed incredible compassion, ethics, and courage in covering the horrible shootings on January 8th that cost us six lives and that injured Representative Gabrielle Giffords along with 12 others. Despite mounting pressure that day during the chaos, during the coverage, KLD refused to report what many others were reporting. They refused to report the death of Representative Giffords. I can tell you I called them myself and said, are you sure? Others are reporting it, are you sure? They were sure. The manager said our sources, our trusted sources, our relationships in the community are telling us that is not the case. We are sticking with our sources. We are not going to report that. And they didn't. That took tremendous compassion and courage. And I'm so proud of them that they delivered that that day. I think of the millions of dollars worth of missing items, pianos, Smokey the Bear costumes, other items, missing monies and wrongfully paid overtime that WAFB in Baton Rouge, Louisiana was able to uncover by simply upholding the First Amendment. All they did was submit freedom of information requests and then they put terrific journalism to work in fact checking. In just the last year they were able to find millions of dollars of taxpayer money that is missing at a time when states need some money. We all know that. And as you saw in that video, I think of the courage and commitment of WDAM in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. That is market 167. And when we hear newsrooms or businesses in our craft that say, it's tough to do this with a smaller staff, we don't have the resources or the people necessary to really handle our craft the way that we should. It's market 167, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't champion that fight. The local managers did. All I did was support them, as did the bosses and the people at Raycom Media. So to me, that is what this freedom of information, freedom of speech, it's what we do. And if Market 167 can do it, anybody can do it. And I'm so proud of them, and it's what excites me each and every day about what we do. It's terrific. We as local broadcasters respect that powerful ability and the responsibility we have to serve our communities on the air, online, social media, digital media, mobile media. And never before has our nation, have our communities, has the world been so hungry for information. But one thing holds true is they hunger for that information. When you ask them what's your first reason for choosing where you get that information, they choose a trusted source. We must be that trusted source for them. We must continue to be that trusted source. Who is better positioned to inform you when a situation breaks, locally or nationally? Who is better positioned to inform you when a dangerous storm is approaching than a local broadcaster? Who is most able to hold local officials accountable for the promises that they make on those campaign trails? for the commitment they make to the community, for their fiscal responsibility. Who's better positioned to take on when a local consumer feels wronged? And who is more capable of showing you what's working in your city? We also have the wonderful responsibility of telling stories when people are at the highest point of their lives and at the lowest point of their lives. And I will tell you, no one is better positioned or more obligated than local broadcasters. So if you'll indulge me for a moment, for those here in this city that I love, of Washington, love to be here, who want to take back our spectrum, who want to reinforce the fairness doctrine, I will tell you that there is no worse time for such action. If you're worried that we aren't operating in the best interest of the community, you shouldn't worry, because we worry about that every single day. Think about it. If we as local broadcasters want to be successful in growing or maintaining strong ratings and therefore strong revenue, we have to serve our communities. We must engage in dialogue. We must seek all sides of the story. 
Because if we don't do that, our local communities won't watch our newscasts. They won't download our apps to check out the latest breaking news or to follow that storm that's barreling down in their communities. They won't become our Facebook friends. They won't follow us on Twitter. And they won't do those things because we would be irrelevant to their daily lives. Thankfully, that is not the case. Our communities rely on us to be part of their daily fabric, and we must be there for them. And I'm proud to say that many of us in this room, in Raycom, and many of the businesses represented here tonight are. And that is an exciting time. As I close tonight, I want to remind you that we are all in this room as a wonderful tribute to the Radio Television News Director Foundation and Association. I served for 10 proud years with this association. I love it dearly. We need to support them, ladies and gentlemen, not just tonight in this room, but every night. They are our voice here in Washington and in every state where we do business to uphold the First Amendment. And we must pride ourselves and focus ourselves to support them. We must also support their efforts to train journalists. We need training more than ever, and they are so tremendous at doing that for us. So I will remind you what my pastor reminds me every Sunday. He says to us, we need your prayers, we need your presence, we need your talents. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we need your offerings all year long. So I hope that Wolf and David, who will be here soon, and I can count on you to keep the Radio Television Digital News Foundation and the association a vibrant and necessary part of our local broadcast fiber. I thank you for this wonderful honor. And as a dear person who goes way before me, uh, but is very important to me, would say good night and good luck. Thank you.